Hey guys, it's me, Christy Lee, and in this video, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about depression and anxiety. And I wanted to talk to you about the do's and don'ts, or at least the do's and don'ts that, that I, you know, encounter, um, about being in a relationship with and or loving someone who has depression specifically, but also anxiety, because that sometimes tend, they sometimes sometimes tend to come hand in hand like together um so the number one thing that first of all let me say there are different types of depression um the one that i'm going to be speaking about specifically today is the chemical imbalance form of depression this one is not caused by an event that happens in your life this one is the chemicals in your brain just don't work right. The neurons or whatever are not firing correctly and it causes you to experience depression most of the time. Um, and this could be at any level, De severe depression to mild, moderate depression. Um, something you need to understand is that when someone is affected by depression, it's not something that they have any control over. It's not something that they can snap out of or get over. And I have unfortunately had family members and people close to me who have gotten very frustrated with my depression issues and have many times said to me, I don't understand, why can't you just get up and get over it? Or you just need to snap out of it and go, you know, whatever, do whatever. Um, some of them with a very, they were trying to do the right thing, tried to help me to get over it by getting out of the house and doing things, but that's the whole thing, is when, especially, uh, well, specifically talking about me and my experiences, when my depression hits, there is no getting up, there is no getting over it, there is no going out and doing something fun because pretty much everything that would normally be fun or would normally bring some bit of happiness or excitement into my day loses all appeal. There's nothing fun about it. I don't care if last week I was having so much fun metal detecting. I loved going to yard sales and um, the flea market to look for coins or antiques or if I was really excited about this new movie that was coming out and I couldn't wait to go see it or you know anything like that anything last week that I was super into if this week my depression has hit me I don't care about that stuff anymore it does nothing for me it's just gone and there's nothing that you can do or I can do to change that until things start working semi-normal again it's just how it is. Um, a couple of the things that you will probably have to deal with if you are dating or loving or whatever, have a depressive in your family, is a lack of energy. That's a big one. We, I usually get energy in spurts, random spurts, whenever they decide to come, and it doesn't last that long. I've actually had people tell me they thought I was manic um, or bipolar because I could be depressed and then all of a sudden I'm hyper, I'm bouncing off the walls, I want to go do this, I want to go do that and then an hour into it maybe I'm like ugh and then I'm just a lump on a log again. That's just what happens. Another thing that goes along with it is a lack of motivation. This also has comes into play with the lack of energy. Um, there's just no motivation there. We have no drive, no will, nothing inside of us pushing us to get up and do stuff. It's gone while we're experiencing our depression. And the way that I am now, my depression comes and goes. But five years ago, six, actually seven years ago, for a 10 year span, I was depressed. Chronically, every single day, depressed. A miserable, miserable life for 10 years. So I am incredibly thankful that most of the time when my depression hits now, it may last a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, 
and that's hard enough as it is, but it's so much better than it was before. Um, when I'm going through my depression, it is very difficult, if not impossible, and it usually is very impossible, to reach out and explain to someone what's going on. Like, I may just seem like I'm in a, a pissy mood. Uh, I may be getting cranky and angry and just not a very nice or fun person to be around. It's not, I'm not doing that on purpose. It kind of comes along with it. I'm either sad or irritated and I'm trying not to take it out on people around me. Sometimes I just want to be left alone even though I don't actually want to be alone. It's very difficult. If I start to feel alone, that makes it that much worse. But sometimes I just don't have the energy to interact, to conversate, to care about anyone or anything. Um, so I kind of recede into myself. And sometimes that's really hard because I really, really could use someone to come along and give me a hug. You don't have to say anything. Just hug me. <laughs> um, so, let's see, what else? Dis being disorganized, being lazy, um, that all comes along with it. Um, the anxiety is amplified. When I'm depressed, I have an issue talking to people, so I would not expect don't expect me to be able to go out and do things like a normal person, like a, like a mature adult. Go, you know, call up whatever bill company I need to talk to. It's not going to happen. I can't. During that time, depression, anxiety, I cannot. I try sometimes. Sometimes I realize that I just can't do it. Um, going out and running errands, that takes a lot of energy when we're in this kind of slump. Doing anything, feeding ourselves, cleaning ourselves, using the bathroom, doing anything but laying there feels exhausting. Almost like, imagine if you had pneumonia or some kind of other sickness that just drained you. That's how it feels when we're in the midst of our depression. We feel completely drained. We feel, it's almost like being sick. You just, you just, like, your your muscles just, ugh, and your everything. You just feel exhausted, completely exhausted. Um, so, a couple of things, do's and don'ts, I guess, of being in a relationship or knowing someone with depression. Do not, this is probably one of the worst things that you can do, is to tell the person that they're bringing you down that being around them is making them feel depressed. It's understandable that you're feeling that way. It's natural. You, we all feed off of each other's energy. So if you're around, especially if you live with the person who's depressed, it's naturally going to bring you down. But please have enough, I guess, forethought or thought or, um, I, don't, I don't know the word I'm thinking of, to not tell that to the person because it's not going to change it and chances are you're just going to create a divide between you and that person even more than there already is. Uh, number two, don't point out the things that they are lacking in, the things that they are not doing right, especially when they're going through it. They already know what they're doing. They already know that they're failing at keeping the house clean. They already know that they're boring. They already know that basically they, they sit there, I sit there and pick apart every little thing that I am doing wrong, everything that I feel like I'm failing at, everything that I feel like I should be able to do and I can't. It's running through my head constantly and it's making me feel so much worse about myself. So when you come to me or go to the person that you love and you get upset with them or whatever the case may be and you start pointing out all the things that they're not doing that you feel like they should be doing 
it's going to make it a lot worse. And there, it, there's levels to the depression, and you could drag that person down or help them drag themselves down further and further and further um, by doing things like that. Don't tell them that they just need to get over it. it it's, they can't. That's just how it is. They, they can't. And, I mean, you could try to get them to go out, maybe take them out, go for a walk, something like that, and maybe they'll have the energy and the, and the, the motivation to do that, and maybe they won't. But they cannot just snap out of it. Um, I guess that's basically, that's the three major things that I can think of right now. A couple of things that you can do. The biggest thing for me would be a hug, a cuddle, just saying that I'm sorry that you're feeling this way. If there's anything I can do, let me know. There's nothing you can do. There really isn't. I mean, but knowing that you're there is a big help. Just laying there, just holding the person or whatever they feel comfortable with, that's a, that's a big help. Remind them, if you can, that they are not a horrible person, that they are not failing at life, that they're not a terrible girlfriend or wife or sister or friend or mother just because they're going through this. You know, offer a little bit of support, even if you don't truly feel you know, like, I, I imagine that it's got to be really, really difficult for Eric when I'm going through this and the kitchen isn't clean and I haven't cleaned up my mess from over here and I haven't taken a shower in two days and he's wanting to go do things and I just don't have the energy to get up and go do it. Um, but if you can find it in yourself to tell them that it's okay, that these things can wait, um, that it's not the end of the world if these things don't happen. Um, it would help them, I think, to not put themselves down. Um, I'm not sure, if, excuse me, I'm getting this out right. But basically what I'm trying to um, get across here is that mental illness is very real, it's not imagined, and most people suffer from some form of mental illness or another. Depression and anxiety are very common and they're very serious. Um, we all know that suicide is a thing um, and it's a scare. I lost someone to suicide when I was a teenager, my best friend. Um, I had no clue that he was that depressed. I mean, we talked about things, but I just had no clue. And then one day I get a phone call that he took his life. And in 2013, I was very close to taking my life. I had the means to do it, and I had the plan, I had the time and the place, I had everything in order to do it. Um, thankfully, I was scared <laughs> enough that I was actually going to follow through with this that I did reach out and tell someone how serious it was getting and that I was afraid. I really was. I was really scared. I had had enough. I couldn't. I had been dealing with it. Like I said, I had just come out. I had 10 years straight. I was miserable and I came out of that relationship in that place where I was and I was okay for a little while and then it came back even stronger and I tried to fight it and I just got to a point where I didn't want to live if this is how life was going to be. I really truly did not and I thought about it for weeks and weeks and weeks and I finally came to the conclusion that I was ready for it to be over. And thankfully, like I said, I was able to reach out because I was so terrified that I had actually reached that point and had the means necessary to do this thing. Um, and my mother came and she helped me and I got some treatment and things, you know, my life took a different journey. And so that is just to say that this is very real. I never ever thought 
that even though I had been dealing with depression my whole life, I never thought that I would get to the point where I was ready to leave everything, my kids, my loved ones, the beautiful life that is around me, um, because I was tired of it. So I know that if I can get to that point, other people can get to that point. Um, so it's a very real thing. It's not something that someone can snap out of or change about themselves. It's not going to happen. So if you are in a relationship with someone who deals with depression, um, any kind of relationship, a, a romantic relationship, a family type relationship, your friend, um, you need to understand this. And if it is a romantic type of relationship, I explained to Eric when we first got together that I had these issues. Um, and I think that's kind of important when entering a relationship is to be honest about these types of things. And if you don't feel like you're someone that can handle this and be patient and supportive, then I would suggest not even getting into that relationship. But if you're already in the relationship, just be supportive in any way that you can. Try not to get upset with them or try not to show it. If you need to talk to somebody about it and vent to somebody else, that's perfectly fine. But don't vent your frustrations out to the person who's going through it because it's only going to make it worse. Um, I'm losing my train of thought. I really need to keep notes or whatever. But I guess I've already reinstated what my point is. My point is, is that this is a very common issue. It's, uh, it's something that's very real. And just be supportive and loving towards the person. Give them what they need, whether it's space or connection. Um, don't remind them of all their flaws, especially while they're going through it because it's just going to make it that much worse. And just, just, I don't know, just be aware. Just be aware of what the person with depression goes through um, and try to be supportive. That's all I'm saying, I guess. <laughs> Um, I've got to take a call from Eric, but thanks for watching guys. I will see you next time. Bye